it's week 43 of A Year of Wisdom, and we have some catching up to do. Let's get to reading. Day 288 and 289 combined. Job 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. In response, Eov said, I've heard this stuff so often. Such sorry comforters, all of you. Is there no end to words of wind? What provokes you to answer this? If I were in your place, I too could speak as you do. I could string phrases together against you and shake my head at you. I could strengthen you with my mouth. With lip service, I could ease your grief. If I speak, my own pain isn't eased. And if I don't speak, it still doesn't leave. But now he's worn me out. You've desolated this whole community of mine. Besides, you have shriveled me up, and this serves to witness against me. My being, so thin, rises up against me and testifies to my face. He tears me apart in his anger. He holds a grudge against me. He gnashes on me with his teeth. My enemies look daggers at me. Wide mouth, they gape at me. With scorn, they slap my cheeks. They gather themselves together against me. God delivers me to the perverse, throws me into the hands of the wicked. I was at peace and he shook me apart. Yes, he grabbed me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He set me up as his target. His archers surrounded me. He slashes my innards and shows no mercy. He pours my gall on the ground. He breaks in on me again and again, attacking me like a warrior. I sewed sackcloth together to cover my skin and laid my pride in the dust. My face is red from crying and on my eyelids is a death dark shadow. Yet my hands are free from violence and my prayer is pure. Earth, don't cover my blood. Don't let my cry rest without being answered. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is there on high. With friends like these as intercessors, my eyes pour out tears to God. That he would arbitrate between a man and God, just as one does for his fellow human being. For I have but few years left before I leave on the road of no return. My spirit is broken. My days are quenched. I'm marked for the grave. Mockers are all around me. My eye meets only their hostility. Be my guarantor yourself. Who else will put up a pledge for me? For you have shut their minds to common sense. Therefore, you will not let them triumph. Should people share with their friends when their own children's eyes are so sad? He has made me a byword among the peoples, a creature in whose face they spit. I'm nearly blind with grief, my limbs reduced to a shadow. The upright are perplexed at this, the innocent aroused against the hypocrites. Yet the righteous hold on to their way, and those with clean hands grow stronger and stronger. But as for you all, turn around, come back. Yet I won't find a wise man among you. My days are over, my plans cut off, which I had cherished so. But they try to turn my night into day, saying, Light is near in the face of darkness. If I hope for Sheol to be my house, if I spread my couch in the dark, if I say to the pit, you are my father, and to worms, you are my mother and sister, then where's my hope? And that hope of mine, who will see it? Only those who go down with me to the bars of Sheol, when we rest together in the dust. Bildad the Shuki said, When will you put an end to words? Think about it, then we'll talk. Why are we thought of as cattle? stupid in your view. You can tear yourself to pieces in your anger, but the earth won't be abandoned just for your sake. Not even a rock will be moved from its place. The light of the wicked will flicker and die. Not a spark from his fire will shine. The light in his tent is darkened. The lamp over him will be snuffed out. His vigorous stride is shortened. His own plans make him trip and fall. For his own feet plunge him into a net. He wanders into its meshes. A trap grabs him by the heel. A snare catches hold of him. 
a noose is hidden for him in the ground. Pitfalls lie in his path. Terrors overwhelm him on every side and scatter about his feet. Trouble is hungry for him. Calamity ready for his fall. Disease eats away at his skin. The first stages of death devour him gradually. What he relied on will be torn from his tent, and he will be marched before the king of terrors. What isn't his at all will live in his tent. Sulfur will be scattered on his home. His roots beneath him will dry up above him, his branch will wither. Memory of him will fade from the land, while abroad his name will be unknown. He will be pushed from light into darkness and driven out of the world. Without son or grandson among his people, no one will remain in his dwellings. Those who come after will be appalled at his fate, just as those there before were struck with horror. This is how things are in the homes of the wicked, and this is the place of those who don't know God. Then York answered, How long will you go on making me angry, crushing me with words? You've insulted me ten times already. Aren't you ashamed to treat me so badly? Even if it's true that I made a mistake, my error stays with me. You may take a superior attitude toward me and cite my disgrace as proof against me, but know that it's God who has put me in the wrong and closed his net around me. If I cry violence, no one hears me. I cry aloud, but there's no justice. He has fenced off my way so that I can't pass. He has covered my paths with darkness. He has stripped me of my glory and removed the crown from my head. He tears every part of me down. I'm gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. Inflamed with anger against me, he counts me as one of his foes. His troops advance together. They make their way against me and encamp around my tent. He has made my brothers keep their distance. Those who know me are wholly estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed me. My close friends have forgotten me. Those living in my house consider me a stranger, my slave girls too. In their view, I'm a foreigner. I call my servant and he doesn't answer, even if I beg him for a favor. My wife can't stand my breath. I'm loathsome to my own family. Even young children despise me. If I stand up, they start jeering at me. All my intimate friends abhor me, and those I love have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and flesh. I've escaped behind the skin of my teeth. Pity me, friends of mine, pity me, for the hand of God has struck me. Must you pursue me as God does, never satisfied with my flesh? I wish my words were written down that they were inscribed in a scroll, that engraved with iron and filled with lead, they were cut into a rock forever. But I know that my Redeemer lives, that in the end he will rise on the dust so that after my skin has been thus destroyed, then even without my flesh, I will see God. I will see him for myself. My eyes, not someone else's, will behold him. My heart grows weak inside me. If you say, how will we persecute him? The root of the matter is found in me. You had best fear the sword, for anger brings the punishment of the sword so that you will know there is judgment. So far, the Naomati replied. My thoughts are pressing me to answer. I feel such an urge to speak. I've heard reproof that outrages me, but a spirit past my understanding gives me a reply. Don't you know that ever since time began, ever since humans were placed on earth, that the triumph of the wicked is always short-lived, and the joy of the ungodly is gone in a moment? His pride may mount to the heavens, his head may touch the clouds, but he will vanish completely, like his own dung. Those who used to see him will ask, where is he? Like a dream, he flies off and is not found again. Like a vision in the night, he's chased away. The eye which once saw him will see him no more, his place will not behold him again. His children will have to pay back the poor, his hands will restore their wealth. His bones may be filled with the vigor of his youth, but it will join him lying in the dust. Wickedness may taste sweet in his mouth. He may savor and roll it around on his tongue. He may linger over it and not let it go, but keep it there in his mouth. Yet in his stomach, his food goes bad. It works inside him like snake venom. 
the wealth he swallows, he vomits back up. God makes him disgorge it. He sucks the poison of asps. The viper's fangs will kill him. He will not enjoy the rivers, the streams flowing with honey and cream. He will have to give back what he toiled for. He won't get to swallow it down. To the degree that, to the degree, oh, I almost made it through. To the degree. To the degree that he acquired wealth, he won't get to enjoy it. For he crushed and abandoned the poor, seizing houses he did not build, because his appetite would not let him rest. In his greed, he let nothing escape. Nothing is left that he didn't devour. Therefore, his well-being will not last. With all his needs satisfied, he will be in distress. The full force of misery will come over him. This is what will fill his belly. God will lay on him all his burning anger and make it rain over him into his insides. If he flees from the weapon of iron, the bow of bronze will pierce him through. He pulls the arrow out of his back. The shining tip comes out from his innards. Terrors come upon him. Total darkness is laid up for his treasures. A fire fanned by no one will consume him. And calamity awaits what is left in his tent. The heavens will reveal his guilt, and the earth will rise up against him. The income of his household will be carried off. His goods will flow away on the day of his wrath. This is God's reward for the wicked, the heritage God decreed for him. Proverbs, or Mishle, 15 and 16. A gentle response deflects fury, but a harsh word makes tempers rise. The tongue of the wise presents knowledge well, but the mouth of the fool spews out folly. The eyes of Adonai are everywhere, watching the evil and the good. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but when it twists things, it breaks the spirit. A fool despises his father's discipline, but he who heeds warnings is prudent. The home of the righteous is a storehouse of treasure, but the earnings of the wicked bring trouble. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so the hearts of fools. Adonai detests the sacrifices of the wicked, but delights in the prayers of the upright. Adonai detests the way of the wicked, but loves anyone who pursues righteousness. Discipline is severe for one who leaves the way, and whoever can't stand correction will die. Sheol and Abaddon lie open to Adonai. So... How much more people's hearts? A scorner does not like being corrected. He won't go to the wise for advice. A glad heart makes a face happy, but heartache breaks the spirit. The mind of a person with discernment seeks knowledge, but the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. For the poor, every day is hard, but the good-hearted have a perpetual feast. Better little with fear of Adonai than great wealth coupled with worry. Better a vegetable dinner with love than a stall fattened ox with hate. Hot-tempered people stir up strife, but patient people quiet quarrels. The lazy person's way seems overgrown by thorns, but the path of the upright is a level highway. A wise son is a joy to his father, and only a fool despises his mother. Folly appeals to one who lacks sense, but a person of discernment goes straight ahead. Without deliberation, plans go wrong, but with many advisors, they succeed. People take pleasure in anything they say, but a word at the right time, how good it is. For the prudent, the path of life goes upward, thus he avoids Sheol below. Adonai will pull down the houses of the proud, but preserves intact the widow's boundaries. Adonai detests plans to do evil, but kind words are pure. The greedy for gain brings trouble to his home, but he who hates bribes will live. The mind of the righteous thinks before speaking, but the mouth of the wicked spews out evil stuff. Adonai is far from the wicked, but he listens to the prayer of the righteous. A cheerful glance brings joy to the heart and good news invigorates the bones. 
He who heeds life-giving correction will be at home in the company of the wise. He who spurns discipline detests himself, but he who listens to correction grows in understanding. The discipline of wisdom is fear of Adonai, so before being honored, a person must be humble. A person is responsible to prepare his heart, but how the tongue speaks is from Adonai. All a man's ways are pure in his own view, but Adonai weighs the spirit. If you entrust all you do to Adonai, your plans will achieve success. Adonai made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Adonai detests all those with proud hearts. Be assured that they will not go unpunished. Grace and truth atone for iniquity, and people turn from evil through fear of Adonai. When a man's ways please Adonai, he makes even the man's enemies be at peace with him. Better a little with righteousness than a huge income with injustice. A person may plan his path, but Adonai directs his steps. Divine inspiration is on the lips of the king, so his mouth must be faithful when he judges. The balance and scales of justice have their origin in Adonai. All the weights in the bag are his doing. It's an abomination for a king to do evil, for the throne is made secure by righteousness. The king should delight in righteous lips, and he should love someone who speaks what is right. The king's anger is a herald of death, and one who is wise will appease it. When the king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like the clouds that bring spring rain. How much better than gold it is to gain wisdom. Yes, rather than money, choose to gain understanding. Avoiding evil is the highway of the upright. He who watches his step preserves his life. Pride goes before destruction and arrogance before failure. Better to be humble among the poor than share the spoil with the proud. He who has skill in a matter will succeed. He who trusts in Adonai will be happy. A wise-hearted person is said to have discernment, and sweetness of speech adds to learning. Common sense is a fountain of life to one who has it, whereas fools are punished by their own folly. The wise man's heart teaches his mouth, and to his lips it adds learning. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the taste and healing for the body. There can be a way which seems right to a person, but at its end are the ways of death. A working man's appetite acts on his behalf, because his hunger presses him on. A worthless person digs up evil gossip. It is like scorching fire on his lips. A deceitful person stirs up strife, and a slanderer can separate even close friends. A violent man lures his neighbor astray and leads him into evil ways. One who winks knowingly is planning deceit. One who pinches his lips together has already done wrong. White hair is a crown of honor obtained by righteous living. He who controls his temper is better than a war hero. He who rules his spirit better than he who captures a city. One can cast lots into one's lap, but the decision comes from Adonai. And as always, thank you so much for being here today. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right there. And click the bell when my if you want notifications. And if you would, and my hit that like button for me. And I will see you tomorrow. I know it's out, it's Mary out. You'll carry me out of the storm. I'm standing at the crossroads. I'm lost without a clue. I need a big pink neon sign to show me what to do. Thank you, Lord. It glorifies you when you're the only answer. I praise you, Lord, for holding what's too much for me. And I'm amazed by you, Lord, because nothing's too big and nothing's too small to lay at your feet.